Hello, this is Laurel. I am the host of the Black Political Buzz Network. And today I'm coming to you with a new topic. The topic for today's video is entitled Exposing North Carolina's Extreme Institutionalized Racism. Okay, so once again, today's topic for my video for the Black Political Buzz Network is entitled Exposing North Carolina's Extreme Institutionalized Racism. Now, I have several notes that I've um, written and placed on my phone that I'm going to read uh, during this video. Um, this video is basically to expose and to alert the, the public to North Carolina's Jim Crow 21st century Jim Crow institutionalized racism. I want everyone in America to know that North Carolina is just like Ferguson in many areas of government. In many areas of state and local government, North Carolina is very, it's just like Jim Crow. It's just, uh, just like uh, Ferguson. Jim Crow, or should I say James Crow, Jim Crow's nephew, is alive and well in 21st century North Carolina. From the areas of education all the way down to the criminal justice system, it's alive and well in North Carolina. If you are a black or African American citizen who resides in this state, then you have experienced it on some level. Yes, I'm speaking about extreme institutionalized racism not little um areas or not little situations not minor situations i'm speaking of major racism that hinders progress within a state or a state government system north carolina should be a powerhouse in the deep south as it relates to business um but it, it can't move forward because the institutionalized racism is so well entrenched in every area of government of this state that the state cannot progress. It's just stagnant. North Carolina is stagnant. South Carolina is moving forward even more quickly than North Carolina is in some areas of business because South Carolina is trying to overcome and eliminate racism. But here we have North Carolina, close to the Virginia border, and we're moving back. We're not moving forward, we're moving back. Our current governor of North Carolina, Pat McCrory, Pat McCrory used to be the mayor of the city of Charlotte. I reside in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I've lived here long enough to recognize when um, there is a problem with institutionalized racism hindering the progress of a state's or a region um, government of, or, or, or of a state or a regional government system. So Pat McCorry used to be the mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina. And when he was mayor of this city, he was a very effective mayor. There were many black citizens who were able to start and launch small businesses under Mayor McCorry's uh, leadership and they were successful in doing so. So when he ran for, when he campaigned for governor of North Carolina in 2012, he ran on a platform in which he, would, he stated he would allow people to have small businesses and launch small businesses in North Carolina. But that hasn't been the case. Now I'm very much aware that the governor of a state has to work in conjunction with the state's general assembly legislators. Just, just like President Obama has to work along with Congress, the governor of a state has to work along with the state, the state general assembly legislators in order to enforce, in order to pass laws and enforce laws. However, the governor is supposed to lead those legislators just as President Obama is supposed to lead Congress. Okay, so since uh, Pat McCrory was elected governor in 2012, I don't see where he's made that much of a difference in the uh, way that black citizens in North Carolina are treated. Our previous governor, Bear Perdue, 
Bear Purdue was the previous governor of North Carolina. She was a Democrat. It appeared as though under Bear Purdue's leadership and her tutelage, many black citizens began to lose their civil rights. Or the quality of life for black citizens under Bear Purdue began to be diminished. It appeared as though it was diminishing. Well, under Pat McCrory, who's a Republican, the current governor, Pat McCrory, it appears as though the quality of life for black constituents in North Carolina, the quality of life for black citizens in North Carolina, is still being diminished. I think it's gotten worse. So I'm just saying it's time for a new governor. We need to keep going to the polls to vote until we get it right. Black voters need to keep going to the polls in North Carolina until we get the right leadership on the state level and the local level. That's it. So I'm going to discuss with you briefly in this video the areas of government in the state of North Carolina where institutionalized racism is holding back prog progress in this state. And, why, and explain to you why North Carolina has not yet rebounded back or bounced back from the recession. This state is, has not moved forward. South Carolina, even the state of South Carolina is moving forward faster than we are. North Carolina is on the northern border of Virginia. And South Carolina is, in the, is further south. But yet South Carolina is moving forward quicker than we are because in South Carolina... At least the people there are trying. They're trying to eliminate racism or institutionalize racism. But in North Carolina, we're moving back. Jim Crow, or should I say James Crow, James Crow was Jim Crow's nephew. James Crow and Jim Crow are still alive and well in North Carolina. So therefore, our state is stagnant. We're not moving forward. We haven't bounced back from the recession yet. Okay, so let me move forward and um, read to you. Um, you know, the notes I have here on today's topic. Exposing institutionalized racism in North Carolina. I first want to speak to you about, about the uh, area of education in North Carolina. In North Carolina public schools, they have what's called zero tolerance policies. These are policies um, that um, mandate the behavior of policies uh, and guidelines for North Carolina public schools. Okay, so zero policies, zero tolerance means that North Carolina uh, school officials were not, will not accept certain types of behavior. But who do these zero policies target? They target black boys. You have more black boys who have been suspended and thrown out of public schools for minor things. I mean, if a, if a little black boy in public school in North Carolina basically um, just goes up to another student and just looks at at the student, they're going to get suspended. If the student says, I feel threatened, the little boy threatened me, I feel threatened, the, the little black boy can be suspended. I mean, really, it's just, I'm not exaggerating. Black boys in public schools in North Carolina, they are targeted and suspended more than any other ethnic group. Okay? And if they're suspended from school, how can they progress? How can they pass their grade? How can they how can they be promoted to the next grade? They can't be promoted to the next grade because they're suspended. They're not in school. They're not learning. So there you have a cycle of poverty beginning at, uh, from, from the ages of five and six. And it's not all the parents' fault either. Because if you're a teacher, you should know, you should know how to manage your classroom. And you mean to tell me that everything a little black boy does is a zero tolerance violation? No, it's not. It's racism. Okay. Now we have child support. Child support. In North Carolina, the North Carolina current child support laws allows county leaders to keep 50% of all child support collected in North Carolina. So let's just say, for example, a, a, an absentee father is, owes the, the mother of, a, of his child $15,000. I'm just throwing out a figure. Let's just say the absentee father owes the mother of his child $15,000 in child support. Okay? So then North Carolina collects that child support, $15,000. Do you know that that mother will only receive 50% of that $15,000? Which means that she'll only receive $7,500. The remaining $7,500 will go to the county. The county in which the court, uh, the child support agency is located. 
So the even though the father owes fifteen thousand dollars in child support to the mother, the mother won't receive the entire fifteen thousand dollars that's being collected. The state will get half of that for fees and fines and court costs. So the, the absentee father, he's never out of debt. That fifteen thousand dollar debt can't be paid off because even though even if he pays fifteen thousand dollars, the state and the county is going to collect fifty percent of that. Fifty percent of that, so the father will remain in debt. And if he don't pay it, he gets thrown in jail. And every time a black man or a person gets thrown in jail in North Carolina, North Carolina receives federal funding for that inmate. Yes, North Carolina child support laws need to be re uh, reviewed, reevaluated, and changed. Because why should the state or the county receive fifty percent of child support that's collected for the mother? To take care of a child. But yet North Carolina wants to yell about Medicare and Medicaid and welfare when they're keeping child support money from the mothers. And throwing the fathers in jail for not paying child support. Even though the father pays child support, the state is getting half of it. So the man can never catch up the debt that he owes. Now, the next area of racism in this state that I want to speak about is um, probation. North Carolina's probation system. If you are a black offender in North Carolina, more than likely you'll be ordered to pay restitution. Restitution is the fine that the court will make you pay for the crime that you were com that you committed. That's restitution. If you're a black, if you're a black offender in North Carolina, you're going to be ordered to pay, to pay restitution, whether you have a job or not. You're going to be ordered to pay that. If you're a white offender. In North Carolina, more than likely, you're going to be granted community service. Community service allows you to pay off any fine or debt that you owe the community for your crime that you committed. For the crime that you committed. Even if the black man com is convicted of a misdemeanor crime, a non-violent, non-drug related misdemeanor crime, the North Carolina courts will make him pay restitution and put him on probation in most cases. And if he doesn't pay restitution, if he doesn't pay that while on probation, he can go to jail. Now, so the black man, the black offender, he's been arrested, so he can't find a job. Because in North Carolina, they don't even want to give you a job if you have no criminal record. They don't even want to give you a job as a black person in this state if you have a college degree and have no arrest and criminal record. So, if you have a criminal record or, or an arrest or a misdemeanor crime, it makes it even more difficult for you to find employment in North Carolina. But if you are a white offender, the courts will place you on probation, give you community service, allow you to pay off any fines. So you don't have to worry about going to jail because you have community service. Okay, so if you're a black man on probation, you can't find a job. Thus, you can't pay off your restitution. So then they're going to throw you in jail. And when they put you in jail in prison, then the state of North Carolina will receive federal funding for you being incarcerated. It's a never-ending cycle, a never-ending cycle of racism and poverty, okay? And you see who is being targeted so far? Black boys and black men in North Carolina. Okay, so, and um, while I'm speaking about the pr probation, this, this even applies to traffic tickets. North Car black people in North Carolina are stopped more than anyone else and given traffic tickets by highway troopers and police officers in, in, in the state. In North Carolina, police officers inflict uh, police brutality more frequently on black citizens. Even citizens who, I mean, you can just be standing there like Michael Brown was in Ferguson, Missouri. This is Michael Brown was standing in the street in Ferguson, Missouri, unarmed. You can still be tasered, shot, or beat down in North Carolina by a North Carolina police officer or highway trooper. And North Carolina drivers, if you're black and you're a driver in North Carolina, you're more likely to be stopped and given a traffic ticket even if you're not speeding. So North Carolina government is accruing tons of revenue from black North Carolina drivers for traffic tickets. It's just like stop and frisk in New York. It's just like stop and frisk in New York. I'm totally serious. Come and live here. You'll see. This state is racist. So, 
Traffic tickets, you don't pay those, you're a black man, you go to jail. If you're a white, if you're a white person, you'll get a continuance. The courts are more likely to give you a continuance and give you time to pay off your traffic ticket if you're white. If you're black, they're more than, they're more likely to lock you up. They'll put out a, a warrant for your arrest and lock you up for a traffic ticket in North Carolina more so than if you are a white citizen. Okay? Now, let me also speak about a, a, a business, small business. If you are a black citizen living in North Carolina and you attempt to, to launch or start a small business here, the state of North Carolina will tell you you have to pay all these large sums of money to obtain or acquire permits, business permits, and then they'll make you pay taxes before you even start your business. They'll, North Carolina will make you a black citizen play, pay taxes on your projected profits of that small business. So they'll ask you, they'll say, well, what do you project your profits are going to be? You can say $5,000 for the first year of business. They'll make you pay taxes up front for that projected profit revenue of that small business that you're getting ready to launch. Getting ready to launch. And they'll make you pay a whole bunch of money for permits to start a business. It is institutionalized racism. So there are four ways or four remedies that I suggest to fix this institution, this extreme institutionalized racism in North Carolina. The first is vote. Go to the polls and vote. If you are a black citizen in North Carolina or a Latino citizen, keep going to the polls and vote until we get it right. Keep voting for new leaders until we get it right. The people who are sitting in office now, whether they're a black leader in North Carolina, whether they're a white leader in North Carolina, whether they're a Latino or Asian, if they're uh, passing and enforcing laws that are racist within North Carolina government, vote them out of office. Keep going to the polls and voting until we get it right. Number two, it's time for a statewide peaceful protest in the state of North Carolina. I repeat, it is time for a peaceful statewide protest in the state of North Carolina. Not rioting, but peaceful protest statewide in North Carolina. Because North Carolina is, in fact, in many ways, another Ferguson, Missouri. Number three. It is time for North Carolina citizens to number one march. Number, no, number two, number one vote, vote for new leaders. Number two, peaceful statewide protests. And number three, it's time for the federal government to investigate North Carolina's criminal justice system. It's time for the federal government to investigate North Carolina's public education system. It's time for the federal government to investigate North Carolina's probation system and their child support system, which is run by DSS, Health and Human Services. And number uh, uh, four, the last remedy, pray. We need to pray. I believe in prayer. I'm a born-again Christian. You need to, we need to come together, whether you're black, white, whatever, we need to pray. Pray for our state to be healed. Pray. So, I have four remedies. Number one, vote. Vote for new leaders. Number two, it's time for um, the uh, federal government to get involved in North Carolina and investigate our major systems here, our government. We need to plan a peaceful statewide protest and we need to pray. So, North Carolina is in fact another Ferguson, Missouri. Governor Pat McCrory is not doing or doesn't appear to be doing anything 